Hello everyone, welcome to Sailor School. In this video, we will talk about antennas and its types and also understand that which antennas are used for what equipment. There is something called emission. So this emission part which we will be discussing here is to be considered for your examination purposes and oral purpose only. Other than that, if you want to learn deeply about emissions, please do refer Google for uh, more information on on board ships we don't care anything much about emissions unless you are a, a radio officer etc because all the radio equipment on board fitted will be type approved by the itu federation now when we talk about antennas the sole function of any antenna is to either transmit or receive any information or an uh, radio wave or frequency every radio equipment has its own individual antenna which will be situated on the monkey island above your bridge so before we talk about types of antenna please let us look into the basics of transmission and reception of a radio equipment so here in this general diagram of basic transmitter you can see in the first square you see a radio frequency oscillator the function of this radio frequency oscillator is to create a radio wave with appropriate frequency and later it sends to into the modulator. So now please pay some attention here. You can notice mic, DSC and telex which are three modes of communications which is connected to the modulator. So the function of modulator is to superimpose this information on a radio wave which was given by our frequency oscillator after the modulation process then the information is further amplified the meaning of amplified is to increase the power of radio wave by altering wavelength and frequency to make it easier for transmission so the final block here you can see the atu unit Full form of ATU is antenna or aerial tuning unit on board ships. If you might remember whether you had a different MF and a different HF equipment or not. So basically MF and HF radio equipment is combined as single one only on board ships. That is possible only with the help of an antenna tuning unit. Antenna tuning unit alters the height of antenna according to the frequency chosen by the user. The height of antenna is very important for transmission of any radio wave on basis of their wavelength which is inversely related to our frequency. So that's it we are done with transmitter now let us look into the reception part of a antenna. How an antenna receives a radio signal here you can see the basic flow chart of a receiver starting with antenna where the signals are received and later these signals are amplified by a radio frequency amplifier so that there will be no distortion or loss of information further after amplification the signal is fed into the mixer there is a separate local oscillator which sends a frequency into the mixer hence the mixer mixes the received frequency and the signal received through the antenna or aerial so just to avoid confusion in this flowchart, you are seeing RF, IF and AF amplifier. RF amplifier will amplify the frequency of a radio wave which was received by the antenna. IF amplifier is known as intermediate amplifier. The purpose of using this is to evenly amplify the radio wave completely so that after this process demodulation occurs. In simple words, demodulation is basically filtering the information out of the radio wave. After demodulation comes the AF amplifier, also known as audio amplifier. Basically fine tunes the information before passing it to the speaker in the form of audio. Here you can also see an important setting known as squelch control. So what is squelch control? It is a control which basically adjusts the amount of audio amplification to be done to the audio before it is converted into the voice through the speaker. So in layman terms or in easier way, we can say that squelch eliminates the receiver noise when there is no signal. So I hope you have understood the basic transmission and the reception system in an antenna. 
so in background there are lot of underlying processes which will be running continuously in order to provide you the best and the best outputs and inputs accordingly moving on let us move to the types of antenna there are several types of antenna and each gm dss equipment uses a specific type of antenna depending upon its property of transmission and reception guys just to be clear before explaining this i had to study a lot of books related to these types of antenna because there were a lot of different types of antenna depending upon uh, each frequency and the maker module etc and each country and each flag state used to keep a different types of antenna and they named it in a different manner so here i am will be only explaining only the topics which are included for your examination in a simplified manner i am explaining this if you don't have proper notes on antenna please do make this notes it will be helpful for you first let us understand the common factors which affect the design of an antenna basically we consider the direction and power of transmission output and later wavelength or bandwidth of a signal to be transmitted and height above sea level so on basis of all these factors antennas used on ships are basically differentiated into following types on basis of their design you can see whip antenna long wire antenna active antenna and parabolic dish or dome antenna so on the basis of design these are the types of antenna generally available in the market and same being used on board so i hope you can visualize what type of antenna was used on board your ship and the antennas which you noticed during your cadet ship etc so please visualize that for better understanding now let us talk about the types of antenna on the basis of principle so on the basis of principle if you see uh, half wave or dipole antenna quarter wave or marconi antenna active antenna and directional antenna omnidirectional antenna and directional antenna the half wave or dipole antenna is used by the vhf on board ship it is basically an omnidirectional in nature and these antennas are supposed to be rigged vertically vhf antenna would be slightly longer than mf and hf antenna as vhf basically works with the target is in range that is line of sight communication kind of so these antennas will be slightly longer in height and will be above your mf and hf antenna quarter wave antenna it is also known as marconi antenna the person named marconi found this antenna so it was named after him marconi antenna is used for your mf and hf equipment active antenna also known as omnidirectional antenna active antenna it is an antenna which transmits in all directions and not in a focused manner for example navtex your vhf mf radar can also be considered as an omnidirectional antenna that is it is transmitting in all directions and receiving from all directions so that is known as your omnidirectional antenna active antenna has a built in preamplifier at the base of the aerial which helps in increasing the signal strength so it basically so basically it has better reception of weak signals directional antenna you might have observed on monkey island there will be several dome as antenna suppose if you ever get a chance to open the dome during any kind of inspection or survey etc that time you will notice that inside the dome there is a gyroscope arrangement on that arrangement there is a parabolic dish type of structure so basically your inmarsat b fleet 77 is using this type of antenna as these equipments are required to be logged onto a satellite for using line of sight propagation as they can be used for transfer of any kind of heavy data packages such as your photos or any egg disk corrections or any data or video etc which is in mb sized format so these large packages of data should be transmitted with the help of satellite using fleet 77 or inmarsat in a focused manner with the help of parabolic dish the data is transferred in a narrow beam and the dome covering this dish is for protection purposes only and it is made up of fiberglass and technical name for this dome dome type of structure is known as radome 
so we come to the final topic of this uh, video it is emissions of the equipment so basically let us understand what do you mean by emissions emissions are nothing but electromagnetic waves okay so as you know radio waves are also a form of electromagnetic waves it's a combination of your electric waves and magnetic waves which are induced together combined they are transmitted depending on the types of frequency and the energy which the waves carry so this is known as a electromagnetic wave you might be knowing that some radio waves are harmful for your body like your x ray waves it is also type of an electromagnetic wave only if you are exposed to x ray for a longer period of time it is harmful so similarly now let us come back to our radio waves so the international telecommunication union suggested that they will make standards in emission of radio equipment used on board so that no manipulation of equipment to achieve over efficiency of that particular equipment should be done so what they are trying to say is no people should be affected by altering any equipment so that it will give harmful radio waves which co which causes radiations or something which can lead to your cancer uh, which can lead to developing cancer cells in your body etc so all these issues used to happen in olden times people used to find shortcuts to increase the efficiency of any radio equipment so that they can send longer messages or uh, messages in long distance so all these things needed a standard this international telecommunication union is a worldwide renowned union the sole purpose of that union is for managing your all radio equipment and they will see how much radiation can each equipment will be given even your mobile phones laptops etc everything will be approved everything has a type specific approved bluetooth wifi everything will have type specific approval from this union then only if they find that there are no harmful emissions then only they will pass this product so hence please make note of the following classes of emissions this is once again this is only for your exam purposes only and also please learn these symbols which are uh, shown here for your exams as it usually asked in both written exam and also for your orals what do you mean by phase modulation emission everything they will ask for vhf which kind of emission all these things they can ask so itu classified the emission on the basis of different bandwidth and characteristics of that emissions type of information transmitted please note that these are the following emissions for your gmdss equipment a3e j3e j2e h3e f3e f1b and g2b so there are basically two alphabets and one number okay the first letter indicates the type of modulation done to the main carrier frequency means the radio radio frequency which type of modulation is done on the basis of this first alphabet will be chosen so if it is a it is double side band h is uh, single side band full carrier j single side band suppressed carrier r reduced carrier f frequency modulation g phase modulation now the second symbol which is a number usually ranging from 1 to 3 one stands for single channel containing digital information of a modulating sub carrier without use of a modulating sub carrier number 2 stands for single channel containing digital information with use of modulating sub carrier number 3 single channel containing analog information that is your morse code the third symbol is either a b or e a refers to telegraphy manual reception manually receiving telegraphy means is your morse code b refers to telegraphy auto reception that is dsc and your nbdp system e refers to sound broadcast or also known as voice broadcast voice communication so guys now i hope you have understood the basics of this emission part please learn emissions thoroughly because all uh, four to five one mark questions or whatever mcqs comes this uh, emissions and modulation etc so basic understanding of emissions is much needed because some people what they did is they used to mug up or cram cram everything like uh, a to g j to b everything they used to just cram up but when that guy came and he asked what do you mean by emissions this guy don't know anything about emission emission means what your radio equipment is emitting how much it is emitting 
whether this emissions are serious for your body or concern for environment or not so on basis of this only this emission numbers have been given so that they can categorize each radio equipment so this is must you must learn this basic okay uh, anyhow we have come to the end of this video please make sure to watch my next video which is related to publications of uh, gmdss such as we will be talking about our uh, alrs volumes everything the information in detail we will talk about that and also we will slightly look into ims or modules how it is related to gmdss so and itu modules also so all these things are important for your exam